Remember, soil's alive, dirt's dead. I grow soil. No sense growing dirt. What's that? Over there? What's going down right now? In the Hollywood Cloverwood studio? Yeah, we're gonna talk about dirt's dead and soil's alive. How do you make your dirt into soil? With products like this. And on this episode of Soil King Showcase, yeah, we're gonna be taking that dead dirt, adding quality products to it, bringing it to life. You see that guy behind me? He's gonna be helping us do just that. So let's go meet him. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lancaster. I'm Executive Vice President and Co-Founder of Terragenics. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's all Terragenics. Man, Eric Lancaster is in the Hollywood studio. We got Eric Lancaster from Terraganics in the Cloverwood studio today, formerly known as the Hollywood studio. Eric, thanks for coming down. Thank you. How was your trip all the way from Arizona? It was pretty smoky. There are a lot of forest fires going all over. This uh, California right now is smoked out, which brings up a really good point. California has a new strain on the market. It's called Smoky Kush. So Eric, I know you, you know your product, but our cannabis culture family, they don't really know you yet. That's what this is gonna be about right. today. So let's tell me a little bit about Eric Lancaster. Tell me a little bit about the history of Terraganics and um, EM1. Start with EM1 because it started first. Okay. So EM1 was originally developed in Okinawa, Japan by a horticulture professor named Dr. Taro Higa. Right, he was a uh, fertilizer manufacturer and uh, got sick from exposure to chemicals and decided he would come up with a natural solution to help fellow farmers because he grew up as a poor farmer. And um, this is back in the 60s. And in the 60s, Japan was doing a lot of research on microbes. And uh, he started playing around with different microbes and over the years uh, came up with a formulation that originally had about 200 different species. And story goes, he threw it out the window over a, uh, just before a school vacation. Came back after the vacation, noticed this big patch of grass and said, uh, okay, I think I got something here. And he figured that was in the late 60s and it didn't come out until 82 is when it first hit the market internationally. So there was a lot of figuring out over there for so many years. So the product was originally for plants and soils and then eventually it's spread out into use in um, different agricultural fields like wastewater, uh, feeding it for livestock, so probiotic, remember it's good for your gut too. Um, and then applied into composting and you just keep going ching, 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 ching. and then in 2004, we came out with a human product. So we have a, a Pro-EM1, which is for human consumption. So all based on that same general technology. So how did you get involved with EM1? I actually, I'm married to a Japanese woman. Her family flew over to the States in 96, brought a bottle of EM, and then brought a book that was written by Dr. Higa, translated into English, and said, here, read this, and then we'll show you how to use this. And I, I kind of took to it like a duck to water because everything just kind of made sense to me. So the following year, I went over there, and they have a small farm, a poultry farm, and I was like, oh, you got to use it here, use it there, use it there. And then... Um, that was in 96, and in 99, I started working for the manufacturer that's in Tucson. Okay. And uh, around 2002, I moved to Tucson, started working for the manufacturer there, and developed up new marketing and sales training, and then we've gone on to, we created EM America in 05, and then we changed our name to Terraganics in 2010. And, and what are, who are you in the company? What's your I'm position? the executive vice president, so I'm one of the founders. Um, you know, I'm a founder. I'm on the board. Um, do a lot of the technical servicing, a lot of the uh, sales training. I go Got out it. and you know, basically, I'm the guy that knows EM. And now he's uh, doing the videography with the Soil King, <laughs> <laughs> bringing the knowledge to our people. Right. So, Eric, we all know what fertilizers do, right? We all know what water does. We know what soil, we know what dirt is. I mean, what is EM1 and, and what does it do for our plants? People, when they learn about doing things with, with fertilizers, they don't learn about what essential component microbes play in that, that whole process. So microbes make the nutrients that you put in available to the plant. 
Awesome. Right? They also yeah. help the plant suck it up, right? So what they do is, uh, we could say that it's kind of like microbe poop and a little bit of yeah, a joke, right. right? So the microbes, what they do is they start chomping on the nutrients that you put in the soil and then they make it available by converting it. Their micro poop could be enzymes, coenzymes. They could be vitamins and you know amino acids that end up going right into the plant. Same with minerals as well? Same thing, yep. same thing with minerals. I mean, so you, you have all of that effect. So when we say we're using EM, it's improving the efficiency of your fertilizers, right? Got it. So EM is really, it's a mixture of groups of microbes, right? It's not just a straight lactobacillus product. It's, it's got a lot of lactic acid bacteria in it, but it also has photosynthetic bacteria and yeast in it which not only provide all those enzymes and amino acids and all that stuff, uh, but also help with the uptake for the plant, and it also helps with your soil structure. So there's so many different micro products and on the market, right? And lots of claims, some work, some don't. Why is EM1 better or different than a lot of other stuff on the market? I don't like to say it's better. Correct. Um, main reason is because like Dr. Higa, when, when asked, what's the best microbial product I can use? And he'll say, all of them. So all your beneficials work together. So if you want to really create a whole new ecology, you want to mix everything, all your beneficials. So Eric, a lot of concerns I get from our community is anaerobic bacteria versus aerobic bac bacteria. Can you highlight on the differences? Yeah, it's another one of those misconceptions. Okay. Uh, typically, you find this in pretty much any environmental field as well, is that the anaerobes are the bad microbes, right? So most of your pathogens are anaerobic. So uh, aerobic and anaerobic, just yeah. simple definitions. Air, aerobic, Right. anaerobic is without air. And then you also have these groups that are facultative. That means they work with a little air without, a, you know, they don't need a lot of air, but they, they need some. So when you get, say, the compost tea groups, they're all about aerobic bacteria. It's all about aeration, which means that you're going to be growing tons of fungi, beneficial fungi, also pathogenic fungi. A lot of people have questions about EM1, and you just answered all kinds of them. But I went ahead and went out to my people because I know that they have questions out there that they need answers to. So today I went out on social media, and I asked them, and let's see what they came back with. Rob B, here's a question. What do microbes prefer to eat? Depends on the microbe. There's your answer, Rob. <laughs> Honestly, it depends <laughs> on them. <laughs> but in general, microbes are going to pretty much eat sugars. And eat some, some sort of, of broken down sugar source from something, correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for the most part. Let's see what else we got. Ah, my wife, Jamie King. I love you, honey. Thanks for uh, chiming in. You know, she's a cannabis connoisseur, but she's all about clean medicine. And this year, for the first time, she's her own patient, which is great. High respects to her. So food grade, that's the question she has. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, food grade quality. The EM1's made in a food grade facility. We okay. don't claim it necessarily because it's, we don't sell this for human consumption. Uh, but it is made in a completely food grade, FDA compliant facility. There you go. All the microbes actually are on the gross list too, so you could use each one of these microbes in food. So what's a gross list? Oh, gross list is the generally recognized as safe list that the FDA has of ingredients. So we actually, the photosynthetic bacteria that's in EM1, we got that on the gross list in 2012. Uh, there's one of five microbes that have been added since 1948. I think that answered the question she was after. Absolutely, thank you, honey. So. If it's food grade, Eric, why don't you take a sip of it? Okay. It's, we're not, you know, it's totally safe, but it's, it's not something that, you know, we're telling everybody to take this and drink it. Of course, we have to use a shot class. I mean, I could do a whole shot, but, you know. Now. This is how I get down. Hey, I was going to give you a shot glass. But it tastes like ass. So here's another question from Benjamin G. What is the difference between EM1 and labs? Okay. Uh, labs are actually getting a lot of popularity, I guess you could say. If you start looking on like Facebook groups, you'll see this, oh, labs, 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 and people confuse it with EM all the time. Labs are lactobacillus or lactic acid bacteria cultures, okay? Labs are one-third of EM. 
you look at it, so it's in EM, you got lactic acid bacteria, yeast, photosynthetic bacteria. So if you're just using a lab serum, which is usually milk, EM's not dairy based, uh, doesn't have any dairy in it at all, right? Uh, and then they also use rice rinse water, which, uh, I don't know, that's more of an Asian thing where you rinse rice before you cook it. You take that, that water that has a lot of starches in it, and it's a microbe food, right? Um, yeah, I guess it would spoils be. Spoils yeah. very quickly, though. It, it does actually not have enough sugar to sustain the total life. So the, the lab cultures are predominantly lactic acid bacteria. I will bet you no one has... A, at their home or in a small farm are actually running a full DNA analysis to know exactly what they have in there. Um, EM's got a little over 30 different lactobacillus species in it. So yeah, it does have a ton of lactic acid bacteria products in it. But you also have a couple different types of yeast in there, and those yeast specifically help with root growth, which the lactic acid bacteria mainly will help with pathogen control. Right? The photosynthetic bacteria helps with breaking down lignin, helps with producing you know, CQ10. I mean, it produces a whole bunch of other different compounds, vitamin A in the form of retinin. Um, you're not going to get that in a lactobacillus culture right? or just a labs mix that's grown in milk. Um, so there's, there's quite a difference when you start breaking down and looking at the groups and the species. So a labs, yeah, you can take a labs and mix it in with something else, and then you might have a little bit closer to it, but it's not going to be the same. So that was uh, actually a really good question. I, I even had the same question. I've been fighting back and forth with that. Thank you, Benjamin, for that question, by the way. If it was your question that we just answered, you come into Soil King Garden Center and you get yourself a free bottle of EM1, or we'll mail it to you. Eric, I'm not gonna lie, I contacted you because I had questions about EM1, right? Right. I've been asking you, hey, I need some more knowledge. I need some more knowledge. I wanna throw it through beta testing. And he's been answering all these questions and my concerns, and you've been doing a great job with it. And I actually obviously believe in this product because you won't see me drink products, and I just drank it with you, right. right? I don't feel it, I feel really good. I feel like doing a probiotic backflip, to tell you the truth right now. So thank you for coming in. Thank you for having an open mind to discuss and uh, the Q and A's that we've had today with our social media family out there and with myself and I appreciate you, you as an individual what you're bringing to our community the when I say community I mean the entire agricultural community because we don't segregate right. I don't believe in segregation and including in the agricultural community it's not acceptable we are one industry and um, thank you thank you let's go to lunch all right you're buying whoop 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 <laughs> Oregon does too they got a new strain, it's called Smokey the Berry.